Hey VAT, I'm going to walk you through today how to build your portfolio cover in Photoshop. Um, that would simply be opening up a new document and setting it to the right dimensions to start out. So we're going to title it Photoshop Portfolio Cover. And your dimensions are going to be 10 inches wide by 7.5 inches tall. And keep your resolution at 300 so it's nice and sharp. We are going to make sure you've got some of these panels out. You want to be able to see your layer panel. Maybe you like using history, whatever you've got, got set up using before. Um, you also want to look for your properties panel. That's going to help you later too. So first you're going to start by placing a couple, three photos. I want you guys to um, use photos that you like, that you think are visually interesting, but, you know, kind of like we did with the Crazy 8 and with um, the geometry piece just like nondescript just sort of cool looking pictures and you can choose stuff that you've already used before if you want to um, or you can find new pictures on pexels or your own photos or whatever you want but at least a couple three I think would be helpful so remember every time you place photos they come in with the X across you're gonna hold down shift and alt if you want to grow from the center and hit enter and everyone's in a new layer you're going to want to right click rasterize each layer to make sure that um, you can do something to each layer. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my cloud layer down so I can see my paint layer and I'm going to make a shape clipping mask. So remember in your shapes you can set to your shape. I'm going to use a triangle so I have my side set to three. I'm going to drag my triangle. doesn't matter what color it is. I'm going to use the move tool. Control T if you want to rotate it, which I do, and hold Shift if you want to scale it up, which I do. So I'm setting that kind of where I want it as far as size of the clipping mask on my frame. Hit Enter when you're done. You have to move the photo above the shape. Right click on the photo, create clipping mask. So there's my my mask, you can see I can move my picture around. If I want to move both the triangle and the picture, I hold shift. They're both selected, then I can move everything around. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do another triangle. I'm going to make that one a little bit larger. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to place that underneath the first triangle. I'm going to play with that a little bit. So it doesn't really matter what you're doing in the background. It can be very crazy eight-ish where they're all blending together. It can be like the geometry where you're doing shapes. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. You're just kind of creating a cool looking background. And um, you need to have on here, like I said, a couple of photos, but you also need um, some text. So we need to leave some space, sort of some negative space for the text. So I'm kind of thinking through colors here. I don't know, maybe I'll change that later. Um, you can go to your fill and you can lower that fill. You can do opacity, you can do blend modes, whatever, you know, whatever you've liked that we've done in the past. You can do multiples of those. You can do a big shape again that um, doesn't have any fill and just has a stroke color. Do you remember that? Ooh, that's too big. So it truly doesn't matter to me how designy you want to make it, how um, geometric you want to make it, or just kind of how cool looking. But one thing you do need to do is leave space for text. So I'm going to go to the capital T tool, and I'm going to click once to start typing. Now for you, you want to look up here. It's probably going to come out really small, like 12, and it's probably going to be Myriad Pro. So it's going to be really tiny. And you want to type your name, first of all. When you're done typing, go to the Move tool. You can move it around. Control T allows you to hold Shift and make it bigger or rotate it. So whatever you know you're thinking as far as setting that up, um, hit Enter when you're done with that. You can set the color by going back to the T tool, and then you have a fill color right there. So you can do this again. You can pick a color from outside or from out here or whatever. Um, but remember, we're always going for unity. And then if you want to change the type or the font, that is up here. So if you hover, you can see them move independently. I'm going to keep it at Bebus. 
Then you want to type the name of the class. So you could keep it super simple. Click on the T tool and type VAT, where you just have this kind of thing. Or if you want to, you could do like break up the words so you have more control. So you could do visual and go to the move tool, control T, and like that. So you're just moving visual around. And well, that's really big. Hit enter and then text tool and then click and then art and then move tool and then control T and then hold shift and stretch that. So if you want more control over the arrangement, maybe you don't want, um, maybe you want to break it up visual art and tech instead of VAT. Uh, I'm going to pause real quick and finish this up and I'll come back and talk to you about finishing. So what I wound up doing was stacking my visual art and tech and I got rid of my VAT. I actually just hid that layer. It's right here. So I just hit it because I didn't want to use it. And then I wound up not liking how my um, clipping mask was looking, and I was playing with blend modes, and they're okay, but what was really bothering me was the color of the triangle. So I clicked on the triangle layer, clicked back on my rectangle, and I could change the fill right here. And so that's what I've been kind of playing with to come up with what I want for that final. So anyway, um, it just is supposed to, kind of similar to what we've been doing, it's supposed to look good, it's supposed to be well arranged, it's supposed to be interesting, um, and it's supposed to have your name and the name of the class on it. When you're done, you're going to file, save as, of course, and save it to your uh, Google projects. So save it as a Photoshop file. But then you would also file save as, save it as a JPEG file, make sure it's in the right spot, hit OK, and head back to your VAT portfolio. Now if you don't get this done all in one class period, that's absolutely fine, but there is a slide on here for Photoshop portfolio cover. We were playing with that in class, and you're just going to insert this just like you would um, any other project. No, that's not what I meant to do. So go find it. There it is. And it should actually fit directly on that page. So what that means is you've got the ability to create a new cover up here. I'm going to have you guys decide um, at the end of the year what portfolio cover you want to put up there. So we're going to leave it blank for now. But if you really want to make an extra to play around, you can see that it just fits directly on top of the slide. So that's what you're going to do to make a portfolio cover in um, Photoshop. I hope that video is helpful for you.